All right, so subtools, subtools, materials, and textures, and poly paint. How do they all mix together? An object within a subtool has its own materials, its own textures, and its own um, poly paint. And if you want it to flow across another subtool, that doesn't happen. A subtool has to be part of another sub or a, a actual mesh in order for it to flow across. To better demonstrate what the heck I'm talking about here is the sphere, and what I want to do is clone it. So I'm going to clone it and append it into a subtool. Go into the subtools, take this, go to the move tool, and move it close. Okay. I'm also going to append it one more time. change that one and move it. So let's say I had a caterpillar. If I went into and changed the material on every object, let's say I do that. Let's say I take this material right here and change it to a green. Okay, It's going to flow across this one and the other two are going to follow suit. And you notice the other two are a little bit darker. The one that actually hit this in the center takes on a live kind of uh, render appeal where the other two are kind of dimmed out a little bit. That's why it's a little darker on both sides. Okay, so what I'm going to do is color fill object with the material of a fast shader. A little bit darker green. Fill object. Notice this one changed its material and its color. The other two have not. So they're still under the fact that I can go in here and manipulate this around and they will change a different color. If I need to get back to the original material or original color, all I have to do is let's say I want this one to be green also. But my green is here and my thing is on yellow. So what I want to do is click and drag it to the green for the color picker and now I have that exact green and I can go color fill object. There we go, it matches. I actually want it to be the yellow, so color fill object. Just like that, quickly switching in between the two. Okay, so now what I want to do is demonstrate this. If I take a red line Okay, and take off RGB, just with this, RGB on, nosy add, and take this red line and paint it. It's only going to show up on this one, but it's not going to streak across several subtools because the other subtools are actually part of their own little world. So in order to combat this, we have to abide by the laws of meshes. So, here I have three spheres at level 7. Okay, What I want to do here is take all three of these and combine them into one mesh. Okay, What I do here is take the first one and clone it out. And then go into the green sphere and append it a different way called insert mesh. And I can insert it in. Okay. Same thing. I'm going to take the last one. I'm going to clone it. Go to this one. Insert mesh. Choose this one. Okay, now I have one that should have all three of them on there. Okay, am I missing something? Oh, this one right here. Clone. There we go. All three on the same mesh. Probably have an extra one in there also. So now when I take a stripe of red, it will go across all three objects. Does that make more sense? So they have to take they have to be all at the same level. 
in order for that to happen. Now in 3.12, the amazing thing has happened. Before, there was a whole lot of problems with having multiple objects with different resolutions on the same subtool. But now, look at this. Even though I've combined those objects in, I still have all their levels. Isn't that amazing? That's so amazing. Can't even stress how much that is amazing. So that is the difference between, you know, previous versions of ZBrush. Now I can have, you know, maybe a character with a gun that has only 10,000 polys and a sword in the other hand that's 20,000 polys and the character himself is 50 and I can combine them all and they're all going to be at different sub-levels. Very cool stuff. Okay, so now that I know this, how can I get this over to a texture? 